Hey everybody, it's Jason Creel and this is the Lawn Care Life. It's early in the morning and you can see my yard behind me. Today, I wanna to talk to you about 10 reasons why your lawn may look terrible. Well, you know, maybe it doesn't look terrible, but it may have looked terrible in the past. You may have noticed other people's terrible lawns. And these are just things that can go wrong with a lawn. Let's get started with those in no particular order. I'm gonna be walking around showing you my grass and talking about it as we do the video. All right, quick mention, if you want to get into the weed control and fertilization business or lawn care business, thinking about doing that, you can go over to lawncarelife.com. We've got video courses, documents, things like that available. Early in the morning, a little foggy out here and dew on the ground. So as I walk around, you're going to see my footsteps. And my yard's not perfect. We did a renovation. That's where the septic tank went, where that big bald spot is. But I, I have a fairly nice Bermuda yard, and I've got a lot of land to cover and i want to talk to you about just some of the things i see because i i do weed control and fertilization and I, I see a lot of bad yards and i see a lot of good yards so the number one uh on my list here and again it's not necessarily number one most frequently but this is definitely a common one uh the reason that somebody's yard might be terrible is actually your mowing habits okay and this can come in a different different shapes and sizes, but I'm going to talk about this Bermuda grass here for for instance My Bermuda has been cut fairly short all year But as we get later into the fall, especially some that look taller if you go down in the grass You'll notice that it's actually brown uh, as you go down uh, Deeper into the to the canopy there. Well mine is not as brown as others But I've seen some that you know where the grass is being mowed at three or four inches tall and it's really just the, the very tip of it that's actually green, okay? And you get below that, it's brown. So what does that mean? Well, it means that if you go down there and, and whack it low, uh, that it's going to be brown. And I had a situation like that um, with a customer recently. And, and, the, and the, the point is, if you're going to keep it low, you got to mow it more frequently. Or you got to uh, continue to raise your deck, uh, not cut as, as much off. But recently I had a situation... A uh, customer had a brown yard, one of my customers, and he was upset about it. And he was convinced that it was something I had done, sprayed a chemical on it or something, you know. And, and it had been um, six or eight weeks since I had been to his yard. I tried to explain to him that if it, if it was chemical damage, it would have happened within a few days, not six weeks later. The obvious proof was the, the neighbor's lawn was one I also take care of, and it was perfectly green in his yard had long brown stripes in it and so i asked him i said how often are you cutting your grass he said every two weeks i said how high are you cutting it he said they cut it i tell him to cut it on number two all the time well he's cutting it on number two whatever that means two inches or whatever might have worked fine for him back in in the spring and when it wasn't growing as fast but with fertilizer and mowing every two weeks and just continuing insistently that you're going to cut it at two inches it is going to eventually start scalping the lawn and, and one of the hot tips i was taught years ago is that insects and diseases do not make straight lines okay so if you got long straight brown lines often it's mower damage which it was in his um, situation so you're mowing uh, you know, more and more, more frequently, don't take more than a third of the blade of grass off. So, you know, it, it's just this particular yard, um, I, I've been mowing it, you know, about once a week, sometimes more often in the summer. I've, now, I've slacked off of that schedule uh, as we move into the fall, but um, you got to mow more frequently and you can't just scalp it. The other thing with mowing, too, uh, just another quick point, sometimes you'll see situation like this where you got a tree ring if you go around it in a circle every single time the same way or if you follow along the path along your driveway every single time the same way with a big zero turn mower sometimes um it, it not necessarily rutting the ground but it's it's uh, just so much compaction on the grass that the grass will sit lower and it'll look bad you know so um you, you might want to change up your mowing patterns every once in a while uh just for the aesthetically it looks better but also it, it does it can kind of start making compressions in the grass that, that doesn't look uh very good after a while everywhere i walk we'll be able to see footprints but that's okay all right number two i'm gonna move through them a little faster than i did on the first one number two could be your insect problem okay this year in the south uh, I guess it was more than just the south, but we got hit bad with army worms this year and they were 
tearing up lawns big time. And so when you saw a brown yard in August this year, most likely it was due to armyworms. So that's not the only insect that can cause problem on lawns yet. Uh, grub damage, I've seen a, a centipede yard this year that got really tore up bad with spittle bucks. And I mean, to the point that it was killing the grass. But spittle bugs can often cause damage to it. Uh, sometimes you might have uh, chinch bugs. So th there's a lot of insect problems that can make your lawn look terrible. So another thing that it could be a problem is uh, the pH of the soil. Okay, so in our area, we have acidic soil. Not every yard is acidic, but um, uh, most of them are, and the soil just generally is acidic. And so uh, almost every weed control and fertilization company around here adds lime to their lawns in the winter time. Now you could do it any time, but we do it in the winter because that's when there's a little break in the schedule and we're able to take care of it at that time. So um, if your lawn, the way I understand it, if your lawn, yeah, the pH gets too low, too acidic, then what happens is the, the grass is not actually able to use all the nutrients you're providing. So what that translates to is you, you may be putting fertilizer out on the lawn, but the grass is not able to use uh, the nutrients that you're putting into the soil, thus it, it's not getting the response that, that you think it would. Just notice my little tree here, cherry tree, got something looks bad on it. I don't know if that's gonna do well, but anyway, we'll see. But uh, yeah, it just, it can lock up the nutrients in the soil so the soil doesn't use it well, thus it, you put fertilizer on it and it's not responding like you think it will. So. You know, you may you can send it off and get a soil test. They're they're not expensive, and they can um, tell you pH. You can get a pH reader off of Amazon or somewhere like that. Um, or you know, like I said, in our area, we we routinely add lime. There are some weeds that can be indicators for low pH too. I mean, some weeds just like acidic soil. So like we have a lot of wild onions and garlic, and you'll see some yards just covered in it. Uh, a weed called broom sedge. I know. Uh, particularly likes acidic soil so chances are if it's covered in that and it's just uh, not very green not responding to fertilizer even without a soil test it's pretty obvious it's going to have a, a low ph so to fix that you want to uh, add lime to the soil and to how it try to raise your ph all right number four and this is one that just people talk about all the time and it's pretty much the obvious one is you got weeds all in your yard now i have sometimes people comment on my youtube videos like jason you know environmentalists will say why are you uh why don't you why are you using all those chemicals why don't you just go hand pull all your weeds out of your yard and it, which is virtually impossible and, and i understand this some types of grasses are much better at keeping the weeds out than others but you got weed like this is uh it's a foxtail and a lot of this stuff's dying out because of the cause of the winter you got you know all kind of weeds in here uh this cut weed I believe and I've got a lot of Kalinga I've got uh, something in here mixed in this is some carpet grass that got mixed in but you know you, you look at my yard and you think oh Jason that looks pretty weed free well if I walked around I could show you the weeds I mean I've got tons of this Kalinga here and uh, I've got tons of videos on here about how to get rid of weeds so um, anyway Weeds are a huge problem, and if, if you don't put a pre-emergent out on a Bermuda lawn, you're pretty much going to be covered in crabgrass. I mean, it's just, it does not do a very good job of choking out weeds. Now, I've seen some zoysia lawns, some centipede lawns, that with no herbicide still can look pretty decent. Some are better than others, but I'm with proper mowing and uh you know th those yards th this do a better job of choking out weeds that's just typically not the case with our bermuda yards uh, they just get completely eat up with weeds if you don't uh, spray them with a pre-emergent to try to keep most of those out all right for the next one i'm gonna have to walk over here and show you a different grass type but sometimes your yard looks terrible because you don't have the right kind of grass for your yard okay so i'm going to show you a situation over here uh, give me a second but I've seen this over and over where, uh, for instance, people even here in the south, they'll, they'll try to, where I live, I'm kind of a little bit too far for cool season grasses, but somebody will go buy some Home Depot and Lowe's, they still sell those grass types. 
and uh, somebody will go and they'll get some ryegrass or something like that and they'll throw it out or fescue or something and they'll put it out and then, it, and then it dies in the summer. I mean, just pretty much predictable. It's going to die unless you got it just in a really shady area that stays cooler for some reason, it might survive the summer. Um, so if you just got the wrong grass for your area, I had somebody other day on YouTube asking me how a Bermuda grass would do in Michigan, I think. I said, not good, not good at all. So, so like for instance, in this situation, I've got a little, little shady area. So I had I put some zoysia in here. This is Zorro zoysia, I believe. And it does much better in the shade. Now it's got a lot of leaves on it, but it's actually some pretty decent looking zoysia. It looked uh, pretty good earlier in the year when all the leaves aren't on it. But um, it, you gotta put the right grass in the right situation. So this grass would, would could use a little more sun to be honest with you. But even with these crepe myrtles, they're real thin. It gets some sun. And, but if I had Bermuda over here, it would do horrible because it's just not getting enough sun. So you got to put, put your gray, you know, like putting a, a, your quarterback out there to play linebacker. It's just not going to work. He's not a linebacker, okay? And vice versa. Put your linebacker to play quarterback. It's going to be terrible. So you got to use the right grass for the right situation. And another thing that I want to mention, and sometimes this seems to be the what people do to their yards to try to fix everything, is if it's if it doesn't look good, they just add more fertilizer. Well, you know, you, you can actually put too much fertilizer on yards. You know, we, we taught that centipede is you're really not supposed to use more than two pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet per calendar year. So you just keep dumping more and more fertilizer on it. Uh, and too much fertilizer on, even on your Bermuda zoysias can cause some problems and fertilizing the wrong time of year uh, at best is, is wasteful, but also might lead to some issues. So, um, but you know, with that being said, sometimes if your yard doesn't look good, it's because it doesn't have enough nutrients in the soil. And so you need to put some fertilizer on it. My yard, I'm sitting here filming my yard in um, October right now, and it has some color to it. Uh, it's not as green as it was maybe earlier in the year. But part of the reason it has some color is because I put some slow release fertilizer that I would think even at this time of year is probably still providing some level of nutrients to it to hold the color. Uh, I have one of the greener Bermuda yards that I see around at this time of year. Another thing I've done is I basically haven't mowed it in about two weeks because I know when I mow it, um, it it's going to probably take some of the color out in this time of year. It's, it may not get it back. Okay, so I'm just kind of letting it stay green for a little bit longer and I'll probably mow it one more time um, as we get into late October and that'll be game over for my lawn for this year before it goes dormant. But it is important to understand uh, proper timing of fertilizer applications and then how much fertilizer. And I got a video on YouTube, if you just search on YouTube after you watch this for Lawn Care Life Fertilizer, there'll be several videos that can talk to you about the type of fertilizer you use, how much to use, how to know how much to put on your lawn, things like that. So you can check that out later on. All right, number seven reason your yard may be looking terrible is uh, too much shade. And we showed you the zoysia grass earlier. Some grasses are obviously more shade tolerant than others. Like for us with warm season grasses, or zoysia and um, St. Oxine are our best options for if, if it's not getting full sun. The Bermuda needs sure enough full sun. Uh, I know with cool season grasses, they, they'll tolerate shade uh, fairly fairly well but most grasses like most plants in general um, not all plants obviously but a, a lot of them like sunlight so even when it's shade tolerant uh, like that zoysia over there if it had more sun it would probably do better uh, but it does tolerate shade same with St. Augustine it tolerates shade um, but it needs I tell you you know grass won't grow in a closet you know sometimes they got these garden homes and they're so close together and people try to grow grass in between them they did this contractors just throw some Bermuda sod right in between these houses where the sun literally only goes there as it comes straight overhead at noon and is getting very little sunlight and the grass looks terrible and moss starts to grow and they'd be better off just putting gravel down and making a rock walkway or something or just you know whatever it's just not going to grow the Bermuda grass and a lot of times even the zoysia is not getting enough sunlight in those areas to do well but for us in the south like I said the uh, the Zorro zoysia or emerald zoysia, those are some of the more shade tolerance. Even some zoysias are more shade tolerant than others. 
Uh, there is a, a cool website. It's the National Turf Grass Evaluation Program. So I think it's NTEP dot org maybe i'm not sure what the last if it's dot org or dot com or whatever it is but um it will they do a lot of studies on all different kind of grasses and they're comparing them on color and shade tolerance and just so it'll uh, show you um, some results and they claim the zoro zoysia which what i have back there is supposedly the number one rated zoysia grass on that uh, website ranking on a bunch of different factors i don't know it looks a lot like emerald zoysia seems like behaves a lot like emerald zoysia but maybe slightly improved in some areas all right another problem can be water or lack thereof so this is number eight on the list i know some of you ones with the cool season grasses as it gets in the summer and people don't water their grass it's going to really stress it out uh, because you know even in the midwest and up north it still gets hot and they and they're not they're not watering now here in the south um, same thing if we get hot and dry like this bermuda grass is going to be very difficult to actually kill it but it will start to lose color if we go through a little drought period so we tell people to, to water now on the watering I, we i tell people regularly to run their irrigation once a week for 30 minutes per zone okay because a lot of times people have irrigation in these neighborhoods they want to see it run all the time so they run it seven days a week or three days a week or five days a week or uh, and just soaking it what causes it that that ultimately causes a lot of problems uh, with some certain weeds that like wet air so i've been noticing these neighborhoods dove weed big problem kalinga big problem nutsage a big problem all weeds that like wet areas so when they're watering all the time uh, it, it one the grass just doesn't need it so if they would just soak it one time once a week and let the water get down the roots that'd be awesome but watering all the time just causes problems and can potentially lead to fungus um, but definitely not good for the weeds number nine reason is your grass is being on a slope now here's my, my chickens over here need to stay out of the road um, but you'll see on this particular slope now i don't i don't even have made much of an attempt to grow grass here uh, but you know particularly if it's like a north facing slope it's gonna take uh, the, it's gonna have our time in the winter time you may get some winter damage so because it, it's the sunlight's not going to hit it till later in the day and if we get a hard frost uh, it's going to be bad but also the type of grass you know so there's some i'm sure some bermuda grass in here somewhere but you can see this moss growing in here and the moss grows typically where the grass doesn't like to grow now i do there's a little bit of zoysia up on top of the hill here and it might do okay on this hill but oftentimes i see people they'll put bermuda on a hill and if it's a steep if it's a gentle hill no big deal uh, a steep hill like this and again there there is bermuda in here i see some in here it looks terrible and obviously i didn't maintain this very well but uh, it gets real thin in the winter time and can cause erosion problems and it just doesn't hold the hill well and again if it's a north facing hill it's going to cut down on your sunlight may give you some a possibility of some winter damage um, but the zoysia definitely will hold a hill better I've, there's a bank in our area and it's got a real steep hill and they put zoysia on there and it's doing okay um, if it was bermuda i don't think it would do very well at all hills are just terrible anyway i mean just mowing a hill like this bank right here i just get in here and weed eat and try to keep it halfway presentable like i said i'll probably do that one more time coming up soon and hopefully that'll keep it down for the rest of the year number 10 i've saved the best for the last and the ones that we like to get blamed for herbicide damage now herbicide damage is a real thing it's not an imaginary uh, creature of people's imagination is probably not as much the cause as, as people like to blame it on us as you, a lot of times when the yard turns brown they say oh you sprayed something you sprayed something you know well that's not often uh the case if you know what you're doing so it's very important to follow the label um, you don't have to go high rate on everything you're out know, there spraying you know, blanket in whole yards when it's 98 degrees it's not a good idea um, but i mean you can there's certain chemicals that are uh, more likely to burn the turf and especially in hot weather and if you overspray so you want to be careful on those things and and you can tell i mean a lot of times you even um, spraying a weed it may not kill the grass but it may ding up ding it up a little bit it may cause a little discoloration uh, and sometimes you have to decide is that worth it to kill that particular weed because some weeds are difficult to kill but what we want to avoid is turning the entire yard brown or killing the whole yard so it's something very important to know a lot of times your herbicide damage 
not doesn't happen because you over sprayed it's because you mix your chemicals incorrectly so you need to uh, pay attention to how you're mixing your products and if you come out with some really high number I had a guy the other day he, he uh, was on YouTube and he was saying um, is 16 pints of this particular product sound right um, for I don't know some sort of mix you know and I got thinking about it and I was like that's way too much you know and and it, it was just an honest mistake on his part but you know if, if you start mixing and you all of a sudden find you're dumping the whole bottle in there you might want to double check your math um, and, and understand am I putting way too much herbicide in there because like I said if you, if you mix it four times stronger than it should then you go spray in a in a normal way you're gonna cause more damage more likely than if you just happen to overspray a little bit and you had it mixed correctly. I'm Jason Creel. Appreciate you walking around the yard listening to me. And hopefully you learn some things about what can make your yard terrible. Of course, you do the opposite of what I told you here and you make your yard look great. Like I said before, you can check out the resources at LawnCareLife.com if you're in the lawn business thinking about starting one. A lot of stuff over there for you. Or just subscribe to the channel. I've got, I think, around 800 lawn care videos. A lot of them on weed control, fertilizer, you know, lawn care biz. I got all kind of videos, 800 of them. So check them out, subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys later.